In this video, we're doing a tour of KKJZ. KKJZ is a jazz station in the Los Angeles area. And our tour guide today is a guy called David, good friend of mine, and we call him X-Ray. But KKJZ is on top of Signal Hill in the Long Beach area, if you're kind of familiar with Los Angeles. There's a couple of towers up there, but KKJZ has a great signal coverage of the Los Angeles Metro, and there's a lot of history that we'll get into here shortly. But anyways, let's stop talking about this and let's see the station of KKJZ in Long Beach. Mm -hmm. um, Self-supporting tower, but before then, there was a, a monopole here on this side of the building and uh, a K knob, which is uh, 97.9, which is now uh, KLAX. They had a monopole here with a 12 bay Jampro antenna and you could literally <laughs> probably reach up, maybe jump and grab the bottom bay. It was so close to the ground. You know, of course, now back in those days, no one came up here and that was before RFI became a big deal with uh, the FCC and everything. But uh, yeah, that building used to be the classic KNOB studios when they were jazz at one point. And um, then they, you know, they moved out, they moved to Anaheim at one point. And uh, in later years, this became an ISP for several different companies. Away. Make sure I got my keys. Okay. Now we're on a roll. There. But yeah, this is this is improved a bit. But this is the old uh, KNOB building, and um, lots of uh, good luck getting into that door, huh? There used to be an LP TV station in this uh, building here. Uh, they moved out for a while, and I think somebody else moved in, but I'm not, Dan would know who that is. I don't know, I don't know their name. Then, they, then somebody had a, had a generator there, it wasn't us, but they, you know, I would have loved to have had negotiated just to leave the generator there, because to try to do that today, you know, you can only imagine the epic with the AQMD or, or you'd have to, you know, it'd have to be gas generated. We don't have gas here. This is our uh, semi-new uh, Gates Air transmitter. We love it. Before we had a uh, Continental uh, three, uh, 316 or 317 that uh, took, took up a lot of space and was hot. I mean, it was, it was, a, it was always hot in here. All, both air conditioners ran and, and, Early on, when KLON uh, got the, uh, there was, I guess there was a generous grant from the Corporation for Public Broadcasting or something for, for an HD upgrade, and we had the early combining scheme. So there was, there was this whole kludge of uh, copper up here that, uh, you know, that was that was hard. And then we've got, I'll, I'll show you the, the the reject load back here that ran 600 watts of heat into the room that had to be air conditioned in, in addition to the continental transmitter. So you could cook you could cook in here on that dummy look. Come here, I'll show you where this is. This is our backup air conditioner when, uh, but we, we discovered it doesn't cover that transmitter that well without my, my bathroom fan that I had to bring in. And then uh, originally this Harris uh, Z10 transmitter was the uh, HD element that was combined with the Continental. So we had all the, we had two transmitters, but no backup, you know? So uh, now, it's, now it's our sturdy, you know, reliable backup that hardly, you know, we exercise it periodically, but it's hardly ever on the air because the gates are so reliable. Oh, here, and here's, here's said dummy low that we, that you could uh, cook on at one point little resistor burnout and, and we've got we actually we have two dummy lows but this this was the one that was uh, on the that was the one that was on the air dissipating 600 watts and then here's the make sure you get a shot of the of the, the flex C but not that I'm trying to have you do a commercial for for Gates Air, but th these things are, you know, they're very versatile. And uh, Mr. Saul Levine donated this transmitter to the uh, to uh, KJAZ 
uh, you know, is, is a gift to get rid of that Continental because the, end, the electric bill dropped like two thirds of what it was. And then here, we're, this is always a work in progress, but it's cleaned up from what it used to be. Um, my boss, Dan Feely, made this antenna controller. Because before you couldn't, you had to come out here and do patches and all that. So we can do it remotely if we, if we need to. And then here's the infamous Z16. I call it a Z10. It's actually a Z16. I think Z10 is a car, but anyway. And we have uh, uh, our landlord, Crown Castle, has recently got fiber out here. So we have fiber between here and our studios up at Cotner. Um, we have fiber at all our sites now, but there are three different, you know, one, one is AT&T at Mount Wilson. The other one is uh, Spectrum at the uh, 1260 uh, Go Country Gold site, which just, just went on the air a couple of days ago and is now KKGO AM. No more KMZT Beverly Hills. So that's our new baby to combine the Go Country FM and the Go Country Gold as a marketing uh, opportunity. Nice. Now, are that, that fiber, is it like dark fiber that is dedicated or is it just fiber internet? It's it's both. Uh, we uh, we do have dark fiber. Now, that's a Dan question because he ordered all this. But um, uh, but we do have fiber that's hot right now. But we also have we also have other strands, I believe, from this site that are it's dark fiber uh, where we can connect from uh, the 1260 site in uh, Mission Hills in an emergency. Uh, to feed all the you know the other transmitter sites in case the studio should fall into a sinkhole or something, which knowing LA that DWP will probably cause one over there. Believe me. Uh, oh, did I say that? Anyway, um, yeah. Here's the here's the fiber interconnect down here, and we have backups everywhere using the Comrex bricks, which are uh, you know which are very reliable. But of course the fiber is better, and uh, and we've got. We've got three channels here. We've got KJAZ, uh, FM, and HD1. The HD2 channel is a uh, kind of a Latin jazz uh, channel called Bebop. Uh, kind of that's a Cuban music kind of format. Real good, real good music. And the HD3 is Cal State Long Beach's student-run station, 22 West Radio, and uh, their their units over here. And that's pretty much it. We've got uh, you know usual. Usual gear, UPSs. Um, oh, I should point out this task cam that you're going to see here. That that replaced the box called Plan B that apparently never worked. But this has a, I don't know how many hours of MP3 you can put on a disc, but we have a disc in here. So if we lose the either of the STLs, that will kick in, and then the ops manager knows immediately when he hears Jeff Sir's voice. Uh, that we're that we're not playing the right you know music and we're you know we've got a problem. But um, this is the original HD monitor here that was uh, it's a Kenwood receiver that the guys from KLON built up uh, you know from back in the day. It still works, but uh, but it but it always loses. It doesn't have it has volatile memory for all the presets. So anytime anytime you turn it off, you, it loses everything. Ever seen a hair dryer? I mean, a heat shrink gun like this? Whoa! <laughs> this thing is this is serious. That's, yeah. <laughs> and that would I think that would melt the insulation off the wire if I tried to use that. I, I you know, I love but I love classic sites because you have you, you'll run it again. You'll have all this modern gear and then there'll be something from the old days that you just you can't throw that away because it, a it works and b it's just you know you you probably never see another one. Hi. I'm gonna take a moment here and recognize the sponsor of today's video, LinkUp Communications. When your content has to get to your audience, you can count on their content distribution using XDS and other industry-leading platforms. LinkUp has provided distribution solutions with the highest degree of reliability for over three decades. If you're wanting more information about their services or just who are they, visit their website at linkupcommunications.com. And now, back to the video. I had originally wanted to have uh, an off-premises audio vault here, but the current scheme is we have, that's, that is at uh, the, uh, uh, the Lassen Street stu uh, office, or transmitter 
former offices for KG. It used to be KGIL when you know when Buckley Broadcasting owned it, and they had studios out there. Now it's just there's two buildings. So uh, today we're not going to be able to do a tour there. But uh, yeah, the, the new building is actually was actually built for sales, and they put, they put the transmitter in there. We're in we're in the middle of pledge drive right now, our fall pledge drive. So this is that this is that week. Sweet sticks going on. Rhonda Hamilton on the air. By this Sunday, you'll automatically be entered to win our new member sweepstakes, which is a cake as welcome package, including our cap, our grocery tote, our license plate frame, water bottle, wine bottle opener, Bluetooth speaker, and an 11 CD package with music so from Nancy. You said you have multiple HD channels on here? Well, yeah, we have, well, we have, we have three HD channels. This is the third one which is a 22 West Radio, that's a student's program. Okay. Now, do all three of those uh, processing go through the nine, the Omnia, or the 11, or is it just? Uh, no, uh, I've got an, I've got a, an Orban uh, 6200 at the, uh, uh, on the campus. Okay. Uh, originally, it, I don't know what it was, but it didn't work very well, so I got, uh, or it was unprocessed, I forget, but, and, we, and I've got PPM encoders uh, in the rack down on the campus. Um, and the, uh, when I put that Orban on, now you could hear the radio station on, on the HD, <laughs> you know. But uh, yeah, no, just the Omni 11 is on, uh, is, uh, on uh, uh, the analog. Uh, and and the, di the digital for Bebop is a, um, an Aphex compeller uh, at the studio. Just a compeller? Yeah, just a compeller. Yeah, oh yeah, this is the original, one of the original Continental racks. Now, interestingly enough, this one's late in the front. This is labeled rack one, and this is rack two, okay? If you go on the back, it says this is rack one, and that's rack two. Go figure. So how long has the station been in this building, in this little shed? Because, I mean, you said this was K-Knob Studio. Was this, like, always the right. transmitter shed? Uh, no, originally, originally the antenna, uh, when KLON originally was the license of, uh, of uh, Long Beach Unified School District. They own the station, and then it's in uh, Cal State Long Beach had a station called KSUL that was uh, student run, but it was very low power. And um, they, uh, it, at one point, when, back in 1980, I believe, Stephen Horn, who was the uh, uh, chancellor at the time, who went on to become uh, Chairman, I have something at the, at the government in uh, Sacramento. Um, he bought he bought the station from the school district, so they 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 put their programming on an SCA channel here. And but the building was originally, if you want to go out a bit, it was in this. Oh, it was in this space. There's a big space between our wall here in the in the city's tower, and that's where the original building was. And the plan, at one point, the plan under Fred, Shal uh, or Fred Holub was to, uh, was to have another building built over there, and that never, that never happened in that, open, in that open space. So that's some prime real estate at the top of Signal Hill that's not being used. But it creates a lot of dust that gets in, into my air conditioner. But because uh, originally our feed line, which is, which is right here, originally there was this huge loop the bottom of the tower in expectation of swinging the antenna over to another building another you know in another tower they were going to build another tower over here for the radio station and not only for us but for uh what's now klax the 97.9 and finances being what they are that just never materialized but that was the plan but most of the stuff on this tower is unused oh uh, by the way, that STL dish there, that used to, that w went to the campus station, or the campus facility at the, uh, uh, what was called building FO, F O one I believe. And, um, and I've got the other end of the dish at the foundation building, but I gave the, I gave that frequency to Doug uh, Irwin, because he needed it, and we couldn't, and we have, believe it or not, from the campus to here, where the, where the radio station is now on the university student building, we have no, we're five miles away, we have no direct, we have no line of sight. Go figure. Because, because they're lower, actually, when uh, KJAZ was up on upper, the upper campus, we had trees that were beginning to compromise the STL path. Um, so when they, you know, when the station 
you know, when the station moved and we just, you know, we just were using the University Student Union building for the HD3, there's no, unless you put the, you know, unless you put the STL dish up on top of the water tower that's down there, there's no, you can't even see Signal Hill. They're so low on, you know, to the ground there. And I guess that's, what else? I, I guess that's about it. What can I say? Oh yeah, I can say, let's go to lunch now. <laughs> and that's the tour of KKJZ. Now I have some pictures that X-Ray sent me of their tower all decorated for Christmas time. That's kind of fun. I appreciate a station that really kind of gets into the festivities of the holidays. Well, that's it for this video. But while you're here, check out these videos about transmitter sites or these about studio sites, or if you want to learn more about broadcast, right here on this playlist. And until next time, stay safe, stay healthy, and keep learning.